Fancy a holiday at this time of the year? Well, MPs and at least one mayor think we need a day off to mark Matariki, the Māori New Year that falls in the middle of winter. And even the bosses are willing to play along, though there's a catch. Adam Ray reports. When these stars appear in the midwinter sky, it's a sign of the Māori New Year, or Matariki. Now there are calls for Matariki itself to signal a day off work. The Māori party's already voted yes. To put Matariki um, in a significant place alongside the other many days that we uh, have as a country celebrating our uniqueness. Te Ururoa Flavels put forward a private member's bill to make it a public holiday. And the Mayor of Waitakere says a Matariki holiday has more relevance than a Queen's birthday. I think we need a midwinter fun event. And this, of course, it's in the Māori calendar, but it's our calendar too. The Greeks called the Matariki cluster the Pleiades, and you've probably seen them without even knowing, because in Japan they're known as Subaru. That's like the Subaru cars and... That's the, the Matariki is the logo you see on Subaru cars. John Key told Sunrise he hasn't put much thought into a Matariki holiday and doesn't want to. What about the 9th of August? <laughs> it's my birthday. <laughs> the Employers and Manufacturers Association agrees and says New Zealanders have plenty of public holidays. It says a Matariki holiday would have to replace one we already have. I mean, it's getting to the stage where... What happens if we get a, an approach from the Chinese community for Chinese New Year? Um, where would it stop it? Matariki officially begins tomorrow with a new moon and another day at work for many. Adam Ray, 3 News. We're talking to Bob Harvey doesn't agree and he's the man behind the Matariki public holiday idea and he's with us for what could potentially be a very short conversation, Bob Harvey, because we all agree. I liked all of those. <laughs> <laughs> but I like Matariki most of all because it sits in the middle of winter and uh, we need a holiday, I think, in the middle of winter to celebrate. And we're halfway there. We've done it for 10 years. It's got better and better, and mm. it belongs to us. It's very ancient. The Pilates was a um, Greek festival, and the Japanese Saboru, that was that. And when those clusters appear in the sky, it means that spring is on its way. Mm. See, uh, I'm ashamed to say that I haven't actually ever uh, consciously gone and looked to the sky. You've never done a midwinter swim either, I guess. No, that's right. <laughs> but, you know, if there was a public holiday, like Anzac Day or Waitangi Day, where mm. you do, um, it is uh, tagged with something like that, you would make an effort, wouldn't well, you? They are very solemn. Anzac Day is a very solemn mm. occasion. So is Easter. I think we need a midwinter fun event. And this, of course, it's in the Maori calendar, but it's our calendar too. And you've got Queen's Birthday which is, sits in June, and I guess that uh, you'll, that'll last until the Queen dies, and that may be another 20 years, maybe. Mm. And then you have a King. Now, he's born in November, so we have, I guess, so the King's nothing birthday. from uh, no. Anzac Day to Labor Day. To Labor Day. It's and, a tragedy. Labor is forgotten anyway, about 40-hour week. Now we work 80-hour weeks. Yeah, and so we generally work on Labor Day. Let's to be own this. Let's go and have a ripper of a weekend in July. That's Some people will be saying we already celebrate Waitangi Day as yeah. a public holiday. You know, that's the, the, the celebration of our uniqueness and our heritage and all that sort of thing. Why should we be celebrating this? I wouldn't because I have swum naked in midwinter and looked up at the stars. <laughs> that would be but, all. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, is, should we have two? Yes, you? I think we should. I think we need something in the, in the middle of winter as a nation to cheer ourselves up. Is there anything wrong with that? And I think it's so indigenous and so right for New Zealand. And I reckon it's going to happen. It'll take a while, but it'll grow, and it's starting now. There's a terrific event right through New Zealand starting this weekend. Yeah, there the is. Guess those fantastic guys from the dancing mm. um, Tamama. Yeah, yeah some, they there's are some, just fantastic. There's some great celebrations going on. We asked John Key. John Key said he hadn't really thought about it, but uh, no. no. <laughs> oh, he'll thought about. It. He'll think about it. Mm. He'll think. We well, make a referendum. I'm just planting the seed, and it'll grow into a very big tree. You are a See, seed the, problem, <laughs> the other problem is, is when would you have it? Because you know, first week in July. Okay. The stars come out about then, um, and it, in spring it's on uh, is on its way. So the Maoris started to get ready for planting, and I think we should get ready for planting, and start having a ripper of a weekend. Oh. Or more years ago. A culture that erected huge stone structures like the Egyptian pyramids and the temples of the Aztecs. Does the answer lie in the mysterious Kaimanawa stone wall, very deep in the forest near Taupo? While geologists still wonder whether it's a natural rock formation or not, later this month, archaeologists will begin ex excavating around it. It's not what you expect to find in a country where human history is only a few hundred years old. 
geologists can only come to one agreement about one aspect of this block wall. It's been here at least 2,000 years. There's two schools of thought at the moment. One that it's a natural occurrence and one that the uh, blocks of rock have been placed here um, by some early civilization. The Kaimanawa Wall's well known to hunters and trampers. Half an hour's drive down a dirt road on the highway between Napier and Topo. Most of it's buried, but not for long. It's on Department of Conservation land, and it's decided there's enough doubt about its origins to warrant digging it out. Yesterday, our archaeologist dug down about... It's on Department of Conservation land, and it's decided there's enough doubt about its origins to warrant digging it out. Yesterday, our archaeologist dug down about uh, half a metre below this face here, and this face was still going down, and we used a steel probe to feel underneath, and we were striking rock underneath that. So that gives an indication that at least there's something further down again. And the rocks themselves bend in a sort of a semicircle around, and it may be the shape of some sort of structure. This red beach discounted an earlier theory that the wall was part of a nearby 1930s sawmill. It's growing on top of the wall, and its size suggests it's been here for about a hundred years. Geologists who believe the wall's natural say molten ignimbrite rock from an eruption many thousands of years ago landed here and solidified quickly forming paper thin cracks, the likes of it occur worldwide. But the joins seem too uniform for nature. Close examination reveals behind the first lot of blocks are more layers, separated by a perfect gap. The surface of each block is smooth, as if it's been cut. There are other mysteries too. In uh, other ancient civilizations, they had a stone which you paid respects to when you came into the site. And everyone apparently has this. And, uh, you know, conveniently, here it is. There's plenty of strange things about this wall, and one of them is the way it's facing. If you stand with your back to it, you're facing exactly due north. Now, it may be totally insignificant, but there's 360 other points on the compass where it could have been facing. Amid the mystery, one man's preparing to rewrite the country's history. Professor Barry Brailsford, who began the controversy, says evidence is building. New Zealand once had ancient Egyptian and South American links. The wall's not the work of Waitaha, New Zealand's oldest known people. They have said that this is beyond our time. And we had the mouse that roared, the, the rat, so to speak, the Polynesian rat, tell its story just a few weeks ago. And it's a story that says they were here 2,000 years ago and were brought here by people. In three weeks, the mystery's over. This forest will echo to the sound of mechanical diggers as Doc settles once and for all if this is the work of nature or an ancient people. Paul Allen, Three National News. Well, well, a man with some very definite theories about the wall is American historian and writer on ancient mysteries and civilizations, David Hatcher. Childress, how can you be so sure that this is man-made? Well, I mean, I don't know if we can be totally sure, Bill. Uh, I mean, the idea that the wall is facing north, the blocks are very uniform. Because the wall is, is starting to collapse to the west, the blocks are pulling apart from each other. Uh, there's spaces in the blocks we can get down and behind them. We can see other blocks that are also uniformly cut and squared. Uh, behind the, yeah. the blocks that we can see, we can see about nine blocks. See, a geologist I talked to today said, oh yeah, but there are things like the Giant's Causeway in Ireland, which are natural phenomena, those big square blocks, it's possible. Okay, right, now that is actually basalt. That's basalt crystals, and as, as yeah. that kind of volcanic core cools, it crystallizes into these six, eight-sided crystals. In mm. fact, there's a, there's a giant city built in Micronesia, yeah. 11 square miles, called Nan Madal. It's built